American comedian Alan Sherman observed in one of his songs, you got to have skin. All you really need is skin. Skin's the thing that if you've got it outside, it helps keep your insides in. But while skin may well keep your insides in, it's not an impenetrable barrier. Medical practitioners have been using the needle and syringe as a means of crossing this barrier for many years. But now researchers at the University of Bath are working on new ways to cross the skin barrier. The reason that the, the, the needle works very efficiently is because you, you put it directly into the blood and you pull out a blood sample, or you put it directly into the blood and inject the drug directly into the body, and that works very efficiently, obviously. The, the difficulty with it is that it requires a professional to do that, or you have to be highly trained in order to do it correctly. And it's invasive and it's hurtful and people don't like it. So there's a big interest in, in the field in trying to find non-invasive or minimally invasive ways to administer drugs into the body and to extract things from the body to the, to the outside for the purposes, as I said, of diagnosis or monitoring. Though our skin provides an effective barrier, it is by no means impermeable. Aontophorosis relies on this fact, applying a small electric current, less than half a milliamp per square centimetre, substances can be made to cross the skin barrier. By reversing the current, substances can be drawn from the body, allowing samples to be taken without the use of a syringe. Diabetics in the UK and America are already benefiting from Professor Guy's research into transdermal techniques. The Gluco Watch monitors concentrations of glucose continuously throughout the day. This is the Gluco Watch here, and these two patches here serve two purposes. One, to pass a small amount of current through the skin, which causes the different substances to be extracted. And then the material is collected into two gels, um, which cover the electrodes. And subsequent to the extraction, a second set of electrodes is then used to analyse the glucose. This provides diabetes patients with regular updates of their blood sugar readings, as opposed to the infrequent finger stick tests traditionally used by diabetics. Non-invasive means of delivering drugs and monitoring patients are particularly interesting to diabetes researchers. At the neighbouring University of Bristol, scientists are working to develop a vaccine against the type 1 form of the disease. There's still you know, a lot of people out there with type 1 diabetes, they have it all their life, they're treated with insulin and they develop problems because the insulin treatment isn't is good enough to keep them alive but not good enough to prevent problems. In type 1 diabetes the patient's own immune system is destroying the insulin producing cells so researchers are looking for a means of disabling the immune system's response to the insulin cells without completely disabling the immune system. Potential type 1 diabetes sufferers can be identified up to 10 years in advance, giving a window of opportunity for intervention, if a successful treatment can be found. Working with colleagues at King's College London, researchers at Bristol are about to start clinical trials of a vaccine that includes peptides, or protein fragments, identical to proteins contained in the islet cells. These stimulate the production of protective immune cells that overwhelm the aggressive immune cells causing type 1 diabetes keeping them in check. It's early days yet, but the means of delivery for this treatment could be an important aspect of the study. There are a lot of cells just under the skin which are part of the immune system. And if we can deliver something to those cells in a way that is not irritant, it is likely that we'll get protective immune responses rather than aggressive immune responses. And that, uh, this is very important because what we don't want, if you like, in one sense, is a vaccine. What we don't want is to turn on the immune system. And in recent years, it's become clear that one of the things that aggravates the immune system is damage. So damage to the skin, the release of, uh, certainly the presence of bacteria, uh, aggravate the immune system and they make it respond in a way that is destructive. Which brings us back to Professor Guy's work on transdermal delivery. So there's a lot of work going on at the present time to develop what are called minimally invasive technologies. And all of these technologies have one thing in common. They're making very small holes or perforations in the skin through which you can deliver not only small molecules like the ones that are contained in the patches today, but also macromolecules, big molecules like um, proteins, like bits of gene, DNA, like vaccines. Um, and the, the idea there is that a technology is used to provoke these small um, imperfections in the skin 
through which drug can be delivered transiently and then the skin it will effectively reseal itself and heal itself. It seems our skin has more to do than simply keep our insides in. It could be the key to delivering a better healthcare future.